Morning all. Good to see you all this morning. If we haven't met, my name is Hugo. Um, I always plonk myself outside the front at the end, so come and say hello. It'd be lovely to, to meet you. If you would turn back in your Bible to page 78, we will come to Deuteronomy 6 a bit later on, but if you'd go back to page 78, what we're doing at Christ Church at the moment is we're looking at the Ten Commandments. I can't believe that we've already got to Commandment 5. That's as halfway, but that's, that's where we've got to. The year is whizzing past, but chapter 12... Chapter 20, verse 12, is what we're going to be looking at this morning, which I'll read in a moment, but I'm going to pray. Let's do that. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for revealing yourself to your people. Thank you for these commandments, uh, these words, these ten words, which um, you speak to those who you have called to yourself, you've brought out of Egypt, you've brought out of slavery and brought to yourself. Uh, thank you, Lord, that you speak these words to your people, and we do pray that as we come and sit under another commandment this morning, another word this morning, that you would teach us, cause us to respond, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let me read verse 12, chapter 20, Exodus chapter 20. It says, honor your father and mother. I can't remember how Rick said that earlier on. And he said that he was annoying me this past week. Just to put it out there, he annoys me every week. Every week. Every day of every week. So, you know, let, let me read it again. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving you. So, what do you make of that? What does it mean? Be nice to your parents and you will have a long life. Isn't, isn't that what it says? Honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is giving, giving you. Be nice to your parents and you will live a long time well. I'd like us to think about something. And this is a kind of big idea. We're going to step back and think about this, <clears throat> see, what you, see what you make of it. In the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, at this point in the Old Testament, and all the way through the Old Testament, God's people were a nation. That is, to be part of God's people, you needed to be a descendant of Abraham. You needed to be, therefore, an Israelite. You are one of those people whom God had rescued from Egypt. That's what's happened so far in Exodus. So he's, he's taken them from Egypt. They were slaves in Egypt and brought them out of Egypt cross the Red Sea, and here they are, they've landed in Sinai, Mount Sinai, they're going to go into the land, not quite yet, but it'll come, and these are God's people, they are a nation, they are a recognized group of people who have come out of the land, out of Egypt, and are going to enter into, into the promised land. And so, get this, God's people were a nation. Could other people become part of God's people? Yes, they could, but they would have to become part of that nation. And so what would happen is they could come in and, and, and uh, blokes would have to get circumcised and they could become part of the people of God, but the people of God are a recognized people of God. So God's people in the Old Testament were a nation. In the New Testament, God's people are not a nation God's people are not a nation, but a people scattered amongst the nations. So God's people in the Old Testament, there they are in Israel. In the New Testament, God's people are scattered all over the place, scattered the nations. And so Jesus said to his disciples, he had died, he had rose, arisen again, nations. You make a disciple of somebody in the Old Testament, they would have to come to Israel, but now you're going to do the opposite of that. You're going to go. You're going to go to, to, to all nations, to the people who are scattered. And so at Christchurch, um, I did this this week. I took the, the people list, the Christchurch people list, and I went from, you know, your surnames beginning with A to surnames beginning with F. So if your surname begins with A up to F, I had a look at your name on the people's list this week. 
And here's what we've got. We've got people from the UK. We've got people from Iran. This is just A to F. From Ghana, from Hong Kong, from Malaysia, from South Africa. And you think that's me, Charteris? No, it's not, because I was born here. I'm English, just to remind you I'm English. Until the rugby's on, and then I'm South African. <laughs> South Africa, but, but, but Kirsten Kombrink, he's C. Kirsten Kombrink, he's definitely South African, I can tell you that. So there's Kirsten, South Africa, the Netherlands, Nicaragua, and Lithuania. And that's just A to F. I need to go to the whole list and see how many nationalities we, we've got. And that's no surprise. That's no surprise. In the Old Testament, God's people are a nation. In the New Testament, God's people are scattered amongst, amongst the nation. Now, my Old Testament question is, 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 is this. As a nation, how did God's people get to hear God's word? How did God's people within Israel get to hear God's word? And the answer is through their mom and dad. That is the answer. And so Deuteronomy, you could turn it up if you like. It's just a few pages on. Deuteronomy chapter 6. If you've got your Bible, 185, 185, Deuteronomy 6. Listen to this. These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me, it's Moses preaching, to teach you to observe in the land. Exodus is written as God's people have just come out of Egypt, they've crossed the Red Sea, they've come to Sinai, two months later they come to Sinai, and they're going to, um, well, that's when Exodus takes place. And then they're going to wander around the desert for 40 years because they misbehave themselves and they're not allowed into the land, so they wander around the desert, and that generation is all going to, to die. And then we get to Deuteronomy, which is... Moses, still alive, speaking to God's people just, beco- just before they go into the promised land. So if, you know, if you've got your Bibles open, you know, you'll see that the Ten Commandments are repeated then. You say, why, why have the Ten Commandments been repeated? Well, because this is 40 years later as God's people go into the land. Three sermons on the plains of Moab. The first starts in Deuteronomy chapter 5, and we are in Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 6. And so Moses is speaking, these are the commands, decrees, and laws, the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, they're just about to go in, so that your children and their children after them may fear your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you and so that you may enjoy long life. So stick with this as you go into the land, and you will enjoy, you will flourish. You will flourish as a people as you go into the land. Hear, o Israel, and be careful, hear Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you, and that you may increase greatly in the, in the land, flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God, of your ancestors promised, promised you. Here at Israel, the Lord our God, Moses goes on to say, the Lord is one. And so, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. And then there's a shift that happens in verse 7. Because Moses says... Impress them on your children. That's what I want you to do. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Keep them always before you. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Here's the thing. Here's the thing the nation of Israel, the people of God. You honor God by honoring your parents, by listening to them, for that's how God will come, God's word will come to you, and that's how you will flourish in the land into which you are entering. If your parents don't speak, and the children don't listen, 
if this generation doesn't speak and this generation doesn't listen, then Israel won't hear and the nation won't prosper. You've got to speak and you've got to listen and you've got to hear and then you will prosper. And so how important is commandment five for, for God's people? Honor your father and your mother. By doing that, you'll be honoring God as God's word comes to you. That's my Old Testament question to Israel as a nation. How does God's word come to God's people who are a nation? My New Testament question is this. How do God's scattered people get to hear God's word? That's us. That's us. We're scattered amongst the, the nations. If you think you're the center of all things, you do realize here in Newcastle, we are at the end of the world, right? You do know that. You know, have a look at the map. There are about 5% of the world's population that's north of us. We are the end of the world. The gospel has come to us. So we hear, how does God's scattered people get to hear God's word? And the answer is through their parents, and that's the similarity with the nation, and the difference is through the local church. And so I've got two points. Jenny Galloway is not here this morning, but somebody could tell Jenny Galloway, I've got points this morning. I've got two points, and then there is a bonus point. So three, I think, probably. But here, here goes the first, the first two. Here's the first one. Christian parents are to teach the gospel to their children. That's how the gospel comes to us. That's how God's word comes to us. Christian parents, and if you're a Christian parent, particularly listen in at this point, Christian parents are to teach the gospel to their children. The primary way the gospel comes to our children is through their parents. And so, my goodness, I am grateful for our Sunday school teachers and our midweek teachers. And I am grateful to those of you who, who lend a hand, who provide an extra pair of hands, but I am particularly grateful for those of you who bear the weight of responsibility week by week in, in our, our, our children's, children's work. We have now over 100 children under 18s at, at Christ Church, and there are those of you who are doing heroic work, and I want to encourage more. I want to encourage more people to bear the weight of responsibility week by week as, as, as our children are taught. I'm so grateful for our Sunday school teachers and our midweek, midweek um, uh, leaders of groups. I'm so grateful for Christian authors that Naomi was flagging up for us er, er, earlier, earlier on, and Christian publishers like 10 of those, and organizations like, like Faith in Kids and Growing young, young Disciples. Do you realize how privileged we are as a generation with all this resource that comes, comes our way? Do you realize that that is not the case as you go around the world? Do you realize that has not been the case as you go down uh, through history, we are remarkably privileged with all the resources that, that we have, and I'm so grateful for them. I'm so grateful for summer camps that, that, that are run. I'm so grateful for Wednesdaydale. I never know where Wednesdaydale is this year. Wednesdaydale and the Lizard, Lizard Peninsula, probably. But I'm so grateful for, for, for the, camp that, the camp that we run and the camps that are run around the country that, that where we can send our, our 8 to 18-year-olds and and they get to hear the gospel, and that's all great. Yet, mums and dads, or let me put it like this, mums and dads, mums and dads, because dads don't think of delegating your responsibility to your children, to someone else. Dads too. Mums and dads, the spiritual formation of your children is first and foremost your responsibility. And so take it. Take it. Take your responsibility. Christian parents are to teach the gospel to their children. And then, of course, 
This is the second part of point one. So point one comes A and B. A, Christian parents are to teach the gospel to their children. B, Christian children are to learn the gospel from, from their, their, their parents. No matter what age we are, by the way, no matter what age we are, if the gospel has come to us from our parents, we are to, to listen. We are to pay attention, to, to, to mark what is being said. Uh, we are to pay attention, we are to learn the gospel from our parents. Were you raised in the Christian home? Is that you? I think there's lots of you who are raised in, in, in a Christian home. Uh, if so, you were taught the gospel. You were taught the gospel by your mum and your dad. You chatted around the dinner table. You were read Bible stories, and as you grew older, you could, you could read books, and you were encouraged to do that, perhaps. Your questions were answered, or at least your parents gave it a go. They gave it a go. You were prayed for, and you were prayed with. You were taken to, to church, and, and perhaps after church, you were asked what you, 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 were, you, were, you were taught. It was never perfect. It was never perfect. I know that because I was never perfect. And it was never consistent. It was never consistent. I know that because I was never consistent. But they brought you to Jesus. That is what they did. Well, honor your parents by embracing the gospel. That is the way God's word, that is the way the gospel comes to us. And in doing so, you will honor God and in doing so, you will be blessed. You will be blessed. You will have come to Jesus. You will have come to him, the way, the truth, and the life. You, have been, you would have been filled with God, the Holy Spirit. You will have entered God's kingdom. Your future is glorious in a new creation with all God's people from every tribe and nation and language because God's people are scattered all over the place. Wow, you are so privileged. Why don't you give your mum or your dad or both, if you can, a call and say thank you. Thank you for bringing the gospel to me. You weren't perfect. You don't have to tell them that. They know that. You weren't consistent. You don't have to tell them that either. They know that, but you did. You did. Thank you. And so firstly, Christian parents are to teach the gospel to their children, and Christian children are to learn the gospel from, from their, their parents. That's the first point. The second point is this. All of us are to encourage one another. The first point is, that's really similar, isn't it, to, to the Old Testament. That's really similar to, to the command, to, to God's word coming to the nation through mum, mum, mum and dad. That's, that, that applies in the New Testament as well. But what about this? This is different for all of us to encourage one another in, in the gospel. Because here's the thing. Not all of you were raised in a Christian, Christian home. I mean, who, 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 who wasn't? Who wasn't raised in a Christian home? I wasn't. I wasn't. Uh, my dad was exceedingly hostile to the gospel. My career choice was a big disappointment to, 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 to my dad. He was hostile. He wouldn't even go into a church building for any reason what, what, whatsoever. I was not raised in a Christian home, and, and, and a number of you wouldn't have been either. And yet, God has given us the local church which I joined. I'm not entirely sure why. I was thinking about this was this week. How did, I, how did I land up in a local church? May I say, the local church I landed up in was not great. And the next one was not great. And the one after that was not great. And I didn't have any sort of scaffolding to work out what, would, what was great and what, what was not. But I landed up. Somehow, I landed up in, in the local church, and what a blessing, what a blessing is the local church. That is gatherings of believers. That's us. Gatherings of believers 
sharing Jesus, speaking Jesus, encouraging one another to hold fast to, to Jesus. The local church is God's mission, mission strategy for the world. As God's people scattered amongst the nations. That's what Jesus says, go, go, make disciples of all nations. And they did, and disciples were made, and they gathered, and they gathered in local churches. That is what they did. And what a blessing it was. And we are the church. We are the church. And so we must take responsibility to, as Paul said, let the message of Christ dwell, dwell amongst us as we teach and admonish one, one, one another. And so how does God's word come to us? Well, as a nation, God's word came through mum and dad. Well, it came through Moses, of course, but, you know, Moses was restricted. It came through mum and dad. The, 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 the gospel was passed from generation to generation through, through, through the home. As we come to the New Testament, well, that remains true. God's word comes through mum and dad, but also through the local church. Indeed, the local church takes center stage. Uh, the gospel comes through the local church. So that's point one. That's point two. Here's my bonus point. Because there is a shift. There is a shift that takes. There's more to say in this commandment. May I say, you know, you do know that. You do know as we go week by week. Please don't think that those of us who stand up here and preach think we cover everything in, in the half an hour that we, 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 we give us. Um, uh, we don't think that. But here's a bonus point. Picking up on a shift. All of us are to honor those over us. And the commandment points to that too. Here's a thing commandment five teaches. It teaches submission to authority, which we kind of don't like as a, is that in the secular creed? I have no idea. Uh, we don't like as a culture the idea of submission. We don't like the idea of authority, but the world doesn't work without authority. And we don't like the idea of submission to authority. Other people can submit, but not me. But actually what the commandment teaches us is submission to, to authority. With commandment five, a bridge between honoring God and that was commandments one to four, honoring God, no other gods, no other gods before God. He's to be the only God. Don't make an image of him. Don't, don't worship that image. Don't bow down before, before that image. Don't misuse his name. Don't, don't do that, this precious, precious revelation of himself. Don't, don't misuse his, his name. Rest, rest, that was commandment four. That is, trust him by taking a break. Trust him by taking a break to worship and to benefit, benefit others. We saw that in, 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 in commandment, commandment four. So, so commandments one to four, all about honoring God, Moving to commandments 6 to 10, which are the focus is on others, isn't it? It's all about honoring, honoring others. Don't murder. Don't commit adultery. Don't steal. Don't lie. Don't be greedy. And, and commandment 5 is the bridge. And the principle in commandment 5 is putting others before ourselves. Primarily, mum and dad put them before ourselves. And so parents, parents, which changes with our age. It changes as we grow up, as we move from stage to, to stage, and yet the principle remains. Honor your father and mother. It's going to look different. It's going to look different from, 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 from season to season, yet honor your father and, and mother. It also means honoring the elderly. That's picked up. As we read on, and I'll just read one fascinating verse to me, which is Leviticus. Read Leviticus recently. Oh, I haven't. Leviticus 19, verse 32 says this Stand up in the presence of the aged. Stand up. It's all right, you can stay, stay seated. That's, that's cool. Stand up in the presence of the aged. Show respect for the elderly. And so that kind of sounds like a, a sort of moral right thing to do. Stand up in the presence 
of the, of the aged. Show respect for the elderly. But notice what's said next. And revere your God. And revere your God. By doing that, by honoring them, you're honoring God. I am the Lord, says, says God. And so parents, the elderly, your elders, your elders, that's me. Got to say it. That's me. That is those who bring God's word, word to you. Uh, honor, honor them. And then the authorities, that is those whom God has placed over you. So all of us, all of us are to honor those over us. Has this made any sense to you? I wonder. In the Old Testament, when God's people were a nation, there they are, a nation, honoring your father and mother was basic, fundamental to how God's word came to his people. Came through mum and dad. How about now, with all God's people scattered? Well, Christian parents, teach your children the gospel. Do that. Take responsibility. Grateful for everything else around you. Praise God for that, but you take responsibility. Christian children, learn the gospel from, from, from your parents. You might do that. You might be old. You might be, you know, well, well over child, child age. And you might have forgotten the gospel, but you were taught it. You were taught it. Oh, go back. Oh, what did he say again? Learn the gospel from your parents. All of us, all of us encourage one another in the local church. Pray, uh, encourage one another in and with the gospel. Praise God for the local church. Praise God for this gathering of believers and all the other gatherings of believers in Newcastle and the Northeast and around the world. Encourage one another in, the, in, in and with the gospel. And then last of all, all of us honor those over us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for revealing yourself. We thank you so much for making yourself known. Thank you for your word that comes to us. To us through our parents, to us through the local church. We praise you. We praise you for that. And so, Lord, we do pray that you would help us honor you by honoring those who brought the gospel to us and honoring those over us. Teach us to honor our parents, we, we pray, and so honor you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.